More than 40 years have passed since Elvis Presley died, but that time has not decreased the interest in all things related to the king. Few people really knew Elvis personally, but Letitia Henley Kirk did. She was Elvis's private nurse for more than nine years, and she's written a book called Taking Care of Elvis. Welcome, Letitia. Well, thank you. Thank wow. you for having me. How did this all begin? How'd you get that job? Oh, well, I was a nurse for internal medicine and cardiology group in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, Elvis had done the 68 thing, and he had bought a ranch in Mississippi and bought some horses. He'd ridden the horses all day long, and uh, he called his friend, who was a DJ at one of the local channels, WHBQ in Memphis, and they had gone to school together, and he said, George, I've ridden horses all day long, and I've got a sore butt. I need to see a doctor. <laughs> so uh, George worked with one of my friends who was a receptionist there, so she took a poll, and Dr. DeCopolis was one of the doctors, and he said, well, I'll go be happy to go see him, but I'll have to go after hours. So he did. And then within two or three weeks later, Elvis had another uh, issue, medical issue. And Dr. Nick says, well, you know, you're gonna I did you a favor. You're going to have to become an established patient because I'm in a group here. So Elvis comes in, and of course, you know, we had to do it after hours and close the clinic. And uh, I was in the room doing my assessment, and he was sitting in a chair in the corner, and he had his head down looking at his knees, and he was talking to me. And uh, a little ad lib, Elvis always introduced me. He called me to Sheena. He said, what you see is what you get. So... <laughs> I, looked, I looked over at Elvis and I took him by his chin and I pulled his chin up. I said, Elvis, if you talk to me, you look at me. So we go on and as I'm going to take the, everything out of the, from the, to the lab, I got a page to go to Dr. Nicopolis' office and I thought, oh gosh, I'm fired. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to his office and I knocked on the door and he says, come in. And that didn't sound too, in, too inviting. And I said, yes sir, you paged me. And he said, what did you say to Elvis? So I told him, he said, he likes you. Let me, <laughs> the, heart, oh. the, heart, the heart got in a, in a regular visit, visit then. So we just, uh, we had a contact because I grew up poor up in the country. He grew up poor in Tupelo. So we could relate on things that we'd done growing up. And then he found out that I had two daughters. And of course he had Lisa. So he would have me bring the girls down there to play with Lisa when she would be in town. Oh, wow. So this goes on from 68 to 72. And during periods of times, he would, you know, uh, let me put you in a double wide trailer in the backyard. That way, you know, you won't have to get off from work and drive and get Lisa and come let her play with the kids. And you can just be right here. We had just built a home, our first home. And I said, you know, no, Elvis, not gonna, not moving into a trailer, no, no. So we did this little argument for several years periodically. So the, uh, my husband was doing construction work, so the economy bombed, and times were getting really tough. So he found out that my husband had prior been a policeman, so he talks to Dr. Nick behind my back, and he talks to my husband, and he hires my husband. <coughs> so I get home from work, and my husband is sitting at the bar, and he says, babe, I got some good news. I got a job. And I said, oh, wonderful, because we're living on my salary, and nurses got paid a pittance then. And... Uh, he said, well, you better sit down. Let's talk about this. And I thought, oh, this, what is this? He's going to be traveling, okay? He says, no, Elvis has hired me, but we have to live on the grounds of Graceland. <laughs> I, I can't repeat what I said and what I called Elvis that day. <laughs> but anyway, it was the best move we ever made because, you know, not only was Elvis my patient, Elvis was my very best friend. And I took all four weeks of my vacation to travel with him. We, my family had our first vacation in 1978, and it was it was hard work. I don't know how he did it as many years as he did, but um, did he change when he got famous? No, Elvis was Elvis. He had to change because he became had to become so isolated because mm -hmm. of his popularity. But as a person, and um, and something else about Elvis, Elvis was probably I nursed for excuse me 50 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And he was probably one of the most educated men I was ever around because he was so very well read. And uh, there's not enough adjectives to describe the man. Oh. Kind, caring, humorous, generous, spontaneous. I mean, you name him and I can put a story with it probably. Uh, he gave you a ring? He did. This is kind of cute. I don't know if you know about doodling or not, but... I do. I go up to his, <laughs> go up to his bedroom one day and here sits Elvis Presley doodling. And I said, and he's ignoring me. 
And I said, what are you doing? And he says, do you like diamonds? Do you like rubies? Do you like emeralds? Do you like, and I thought, where is he going with this? So then it was over. He quit doodling and we stopped the conversation. It goes on. So a couple of weeks after that, he calls me down there and he says, Tashina, you need to get down here right now. And I thought, oh, what is it now? So I get down there and when I get to the front, I see the jeweler's car down there. So I thought he was probably gonna show me something he'd picked out for somebody, which he had. <laughs> so he had me this ring made and I have it on today. Oh. oh. And he was, he was, yeah, of course, oh, it blew me away. It's, how special. Oh. Wow. So it has emerald cut diamonds and it has round diamonds. And um, he told Lowell, he said, now, I'm going to tell you, I don't want another ring made off of this mold. This is it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, so oh. it's kind of an interesting story. Several years after that, Felton Jarvis was his RCA producer. And uh, we were out with him one night and he saw my ring and he had a fit over it. He says, oh, I've got to have one of those for Mary. And I said, well, and this is what he said, there will not be another one made. Well, you've got to meet this lady, but she has got wonderful that stories, amazing. and you can. She's written this great book, and she is going to be signing copies. There's a book signing at Island Branch Library on Anna Maria on February 1st. It's an awesome book. Wonderful stories, Leticia. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back, and here's some classical call music.